Hi, I'm Sophia Kennedy, and this is my portfolio for VMCS 2991B. Everybody Thanks. knows this one. It's an old uh, raunchy old C tune. So everybody bang their feet and clap their hands. Oh, the year was 1778. How I wish I was in Sherbrooke now. A letter of a mark came from the king. Scummiest vessel I'd ever seen. God damn them all. I was towing crews, the seas for American gold. Fire no guns, shed no tears. A broken man on a Halifax pier, the last of Barrett's privateers. Oh, well, sit Barrett ride the town. How I wish I was in Sherbrooke now. Twenty brave men, all fishermen, who would make for him antelope's crew, god damn them all. I was told we cruise the seas for American gold. We'd fire no guns, shed no tears. I'm a broken man on a Halifax pier, the last of Barrett's privateers. That was my Uncle Gary um, singing Barrett's Privateers just this past summer. I think it was in June or July. Um, but I chose to start off with that video for this project um, because of how relevant it is. And I think that uh, there's many aspects that go into that song and that go into that video shown. Um, the first one being that it's, as he says in the beginning, it's a... It's a song he always sings. It's a pretty much a traditional Cape Breton party song. Um, so when I have to, or when I reflect on my culture and what it means to be Cape Breton, I always remember him singing these at every family gathering, um, at any every party. Uh, it's just a song that's always sung, uh, so that really resonates with me, um, as well as why he's singing it. So in that video, he's singing it because they're fundraising for the Hawks Dream Field, in uh, where he lives in Dominion, Cape Breton. So that also ties into how important community is within Cape Breton and how every member of that community uh, works together and you work for a kind of a common goal. Um, and that reflects with, you know, your neighbor, like you, <laughs> you do anything for your neighbor, uh, no matter what, or anything for your community because everything is a community goal. So it's very uh, community oriented um, so I think that that is what makes it really culturally unique, being from Cape Breton. And I guess that kind of, you know, plays up um, the role of being friendly, why we're always so friendly, so nice, <laughs> is that community is something that's really important to us. And it's something that I know for me um, was important to me growing up. And it was instilled in me, you know, to be, always be nice to your neighbor, always. My father's family is from Lewisburg in Cape Breton, and I guess that's most or best associated with uh, the Fortress of Lewisburg National H Historic Site. And a really interesting aspect of my cultural identity and my heritage is that, you know, my grandparents and my great-grandparents um, actually lived on the site. Um, so in the 1960s, uh, they were subjected to the second expropriation of the land. So the government uh, moved them uh, to a nearby area known now as Catalone. Um, so basically their house was loaded onto a flatbed truck and driven uh, 20 minutes away. Over Thanksgiving this past year, I had the opportunity of going back to the site where my great-grandparents had their house in Lewisburg and seeing um, the field at which it once stood. And all that remains now is the front step or the side door step. Um, but it was a really neat experience to be able to stand on the step and look out over the same view that they would have had when they lived there. And it really plays an important role into my cultural identity and heritage because it shows or it demonstrates that kind of connection with the land. Um, and an example of this is that after my great-grandparents were moved 20 minutes away from the step, my great-grandfather used to walk to it uh, in the middle of the night, which I found very odd. Um, but very interesting that he felt attached or kind of connected to that area. And it was really important to me to be able to go back and uh, just kind of see what it was like from my perspective now. That being said, um, being from Cape Breton, I do still fit the stereotypical uh, maritime or Atlantic Canadian 
So my aunt uh, fishes lobster for a living. <laughs> so I have lots of pictures of, of her on her boat. Um, and I have lots of pictures of, you know, my family uh, fishing lobster and catching lobster. So I think lobster is also a very <laughs> important part of my cultural identity is is uh, the fisheries. So my aunt fishes tuna and crab and lobster. Um, so growing up, we always had fresh seafood. You know, somebody would always have scallops or crab or lobster. Um, and really looking back, what makes that unique and special is that um, instead of going to Sobeys or Clearwater and buying lobster, um, I would hop in my dad's truck and we'd drive down to the wharf and we'd go into the lobster pound and you, you're literally buying the lobsters right as they come off the boat. So you can't get any any more fresh than that. And it's it's a really unique experience, you know, when you go and you're able to buy your lobsters that locally, um, directly almost from the, the fishermen who caught them. Um, but it's interesting because growing up, since I had access to fresh lobster like that, I find uh, lobster in restaurants are not the same. <laughs> so even at a very nice restaurant, I find that the lobster isn't as good as um, what I'm used to or what I could have if I went back home to Cape Breton. Another important part of my cultural identity is looking at the importance of my grandparents and my great aunts and uncles and how They've always played really like prominent figures within my family. So it's, they are the glue in a sense um, that holds the family together. Um, so even we had a family reunion in the past year and it's interesting to see all of the great aunts and uncles and they all sit up at the front together because you know they're the oldest and you know, growing up, you're taught to respect and to listen to them. Uh, so that's where a lot of the stories that I have growing up come from and from my family in the past. Um, most notably would be my uncle, my great uncle Gino. And he always, always, always talks about his father. Um, and his father is or was um, a boxer in Cape Breton. And uh, he was an Italian boxer. And his name was Pordina. Um, and his last name was Smith, but it's interesting that um, when Pordina's father immigrated from Italy to Canada, he changed his last name from Spinozola to Smith. Um, so he's also, he's only known as Pordina Smith. Um, so growing up, I'd hear stories about what an amazing boxer he was and um, what an amazing person. And I think you know, to an extent living in Cape Breton, everybody knows somebody that worked at the steel plant or worked in the coal mines or worked as a farmer or a fisherman. And um, that kind of speaks in this story as well, is that uh, alongside, you know, being a boxer in his pastime, uh, Pordino was a pipe fitter for the steel, steel and iron company in Sydney. And he worked there for 33 years. Um, and he was actually inducted, I think, into the Maritime Boxing Hall of Fame in 1986, I believe. Um, so that's always a bit of family pride in that story that we take with us everywhere. And if you look at it like that heritage of boxing in the family has translated to now, um, my family will rent a table and they'll go to Cape Breton and they'll watch boxing fights now. Although none of us box anymore and we're not uh, related to anybody that boxes now, but they still find, um, they still find that they're able to connect, I guess, in a sense, uh, to that identity of boxing and the arena. So that's also a really interesting aspect of my family history. For me, reflecting on my family heritage and history um, of Cape Breton and thinking about culturally, how does that make me who I am? I can look at my father's side, who is uh, more so an Irish immigrant who lived in Cape Breton. His side lived here for 150 years of farming. Um, and then when I compare that to my mother's side of the family, who uh, immigrated from Italy in the early 1900s, and um, 
it, it demonstrates to me that Cape Breton is such a mixing pot of different cultures that it creates almost like a multicultural community, especially if you look at places uh, in Cape Breton like the pier, the Whitney Pier uh, in Sydney. It's like that a lot. So I think, you know, growing up and listening to those Irish tunes or Irish songs that my uncle would sing, and then even comparing that with the Italian dishes of pasta that, you know, my great uncle Gino would make for Christmas. That culturally it made me kind of diverse in a way. Um, diverse in a sense, but also gave me an identity of belonging to Cape Breton because, you know, because it's such a melting pot that it kind of creates its own identity. Um, and that's what Cape Breton means to me. It's a lot about family and it's a lot about community. So for me, being a Cape Bretoner means that only Cape Bretoners can make fun of other Cape Bretoners. If you live on the mainland and you try making fun of Cape Bretoners, like that's not going to fly. That's too true, Tracy. Honest to God, it is. But you know what being a Cape Bretoner means to me? I know everyone's business, everything that's going on around me. I know who's sleeping with who, who bought whose house. Who's having what for supper because I've seen them up Sobeys. Like, that's what community is, and that's what Cape Breton is. Home of my heart. Well, that concludes my uh, VMCS portfolio. I'd really like to thank Tracy Martina for being willing to do that short little clip. Um, I think it sums up really nicely what I've been trying to put across. And um, thank you so much for watching.